Hi students, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tissues today, specifically connective tissues. As you know, we've been studying histology, which is the study of tissues, and we've been working on epithelial. But now we're going to focus our attention on connective, which is the most varied and vast of the three tissue types. It can get a little challenging to keep it straight, so I'm going to keep referring back to this graphic just to help you keep in perspective where we are as we go through. So we're going to talk about the various types. So keep in mind the function overall for connected tissue. Its job is to connect the epithelium to the rest of the body. And it has some other varied functions as well, like providing structure in the form of things like bone and cartilage, storing energy in the form of fat, transporting in things like blood and lymph, and keep in mind that none of these have contact with the outside world on a regular basis. And that's one of the characteristics of connective tissue. Now, the way to keep the things to keep in mind about connective tissue are that remember, form always follows function. And there are varied cells and matrix that show the different types of connective tissue. So the cells, the specialized cells, will be learning um, some types in each kind. And then the matrix is covered or in the back of the cells with protein fibers and what is called the ground substance. The ground substance is fluid or gel-like in the background. So I like to think of it as like jello. Let's say you're making a jello and you stir the gelatin and then you decide you want to put some fruit in it. So you put in some strawberries and then you say, you know what, I really like coconut. So you put in the coconut and then when the jello sets and you look back at the jello, you find out that you've got a stabilized ground substance. That would be your gelatin. It's either gel or fluid. You have the coconut in there, which is spread around. That's the protein fibers. And then you have those um, strawberries and those represent the cells. So that's a good picture to help you remember what connective tissue is like and what it includes. The first category, connective tissue proper, sometimes we call it CTP for short. It has uh, dense and loose. So back to those three components. Dense has more fibers and less ground substance. Loose has more ground substance and less fibers. So that form of it follows what it does and what it needs to have for its job. All right, so let's talk some more about dense and loose. We're still in the category of connective tissue proper. So here we go again. Remember, dense has more fibers and less ground substance. Tendons, in this case, are responsible to hold muscle to bone and they have to be very, very strong anchors. For instance, if you want to try to feel one of your tendons, I usually tell students to um, contract your bicep and then reach into the inside of your elbow and push down with one of your fingers. You'll feel something there in your elbow, inner elbow. It feels like a piece of bone, but really that's your tendon holding your bicep to the bone. Loose, examples of loose would look something like this. This is a common form of loose connective tissue called adipose tissue. Notice the adipocytes and that white stuff in the picture to the right, which is a real picture, are little, they're cells and they're full of fat. So adipocytes are full of fat. So what do you think? On the left, is it dense or loose? What about the right? You might have guessed the one on the right is a tendon. The one on the left is definitely loose connective tissue. Can you see the difference in the structure in the ground substance in the cells present? So now look a little bit more closely here at the cells. This particular kind of tissue is called areolar tissue. And if you look inside, you might notice some fibers, some cells, and of course the pinkish areas in the back which are the ground substance part of the matrix as well. Let's talk about those eight cell types. There are eight cell types in connective tissue proper. Fibroblasts, these are very common. I put a little star there because they are the most common. And they are used as a cellular cement to hold things together. Then we have one called macrophages. These guys are cleaner up, cleaner cells. They eat up pathogens. 
adipocytes. We talked about those a minute, a little minute ago. By the way, we all have about the same number of these. It doesn't matter if, you ha if you're heavy or you're not, you have about the same number of adipocytes. Mesenchymal cells, these are important for injury repair. Melanocytes, those are our pigment cells. Mast cells, these are the ones that make us swell up when we get hurt. They're actually protecting our tissues underneath. Lymphocytes, they're part of our immune system. And the last type is kind of like a macrophage. It's just a smaller version of it. It's called a microphage. So now, what about the fibers? Remember, it's all about the cells, the fibers, and the ground substance that makes up connected tissue. There are three types of fibers, collagen, reticular, and elastic. The strongest one is collagen, and then they decrease in strength as we go down. So strength decreases as we go down. Collagen is the strongest. And then elastic would be the stretchiest. So if you read um, their names and what they do and where they work, you can see that their form continues to follow their function. Now just a little bit about that ground substance. Remember ground substance is what's in the back. It could be clear, it could be colorless, and viscous meaning thick or fluid-like, sometimes even gel-like. And that's what fills the spaces. So if you look at this picture here, you'll see a lot of purplish pink ground substance behind the cells that are present. Now, now that we talked about the cells and the fibers, take a closer look. And where do you see the different fibers and the different cells that we've talked about? The very thick yellow ones are collagen. The very thin dark ones, those are elastic fibers. And you can see the reticular fibers up at the top. They're brown and they're kind of mesh-like. Take a look at some of the cells that we just mentioned. I see a melanocyte on the upper left, a lymphocyte on the bottom right, the fibroblast, that cellular glue on the right-hand middle. So hopefully you notice more of them now that you know their names. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about loose and dense in more specific terms. So loose, I showed you a couple of them already. Areolar tissue, adipose tissue, and reticular. Those are the packing materials of the body. So the one that we looked at earlier is the areolar tissue. And it is found underneath your skin, right below the epithelial tissue, holding things together, holding your blood vessels, and so forth. Adipose tissue, we talked about the main cell is an adipocyte. The prefix adip means fat, site means cell. Okay, again, it provides padding, shock absorption, reduce, helps us to um, store energy. Um, you may not have known this, but there are two types of fat. There's white fat and brown fat. White fat is the most common type of fat. Um, it's our normal stored fat, our love handles, so to speak. It's important for insulation and absorbing shock, but brown fat is actually called brown because it has blood vessels in it. So we say it's more vascularized. It has the adipocytes there actually have mitochondria and it can be used to produce heat for our bodies to use as energy. So I think we talked already about most adults have the same amount of adipocytes and when we lose weight, our adipocytes shrink. Now, if a person gets liposuction, they can have some of these adipocytes removed, but that doesn't mean that they will never gain weight. That is not a long-term solution unless they change their lifestyle and their behavior and their eating habits. If they just continue to eat and do all the things they did before, they just continue to add fat into those cells, the ones they have will just grow and they can still gain weight. And here's that third type of tissue that I mentioned, reticular tissue. Notice that's found covering many of our organs. The reticular fibers are branched. There's still quite a bit of space in the matrix to allow for movement of the organs. And they're very supportive and important for those organs to have a covering around them. All right, we need to talk a little bit more about dense connective tissue. Remember, Dense connected tissue has tightly packed collagen fibers, sometimes elastic fibers. It's called dense because they are tightly packed. 
I'm not going to go into each kind. There is a lot of different kinds and I don't want to confuse you, but I do want to talk just a little bit about tendons and ligaments. Okay, so tendons and ligaments. Tendons on the left, ligaments on the right here. So remember, tendons have collagen fibers parallel. Their primary cell is a fibroblast. And remember that tendon holds muscle to bone. Ligaments on the right hand side here, you can see that they have different kinds of fibers. They also have fibroblasts, but their fibers are thinner and a little bit stretchier and they actually have space and they're branched. So guess what? The ligaments will tend to have the ability to bend and a little bit more and give a little bit more. And that's important because if you wanna move your vertebrae, and the ligaments are between there, you need to be able to twist and that allows the give that's needed for that. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about fluid connective tissue now. Fluid connective tissue, we're just gonna spend just a minute on blood and lymph. So blood obviously has a very liquid matrix and then it has what are called formed elements. The formed elements are cells and red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are the type of things that you see in the formed elements in the blood, okay? And then of course, a very watery matrix. Platelets are not actually cells, they're just pieces of cells, but they are also present in, for instance, blood. And a quick, just a quick tour through supporting connective tissue. Supportive or supporting connective tissue, two types, cartilage and bone, okay? And this is where our body gets support and allows protection and even some shock absorption in the form of cartilage. They're both a little different and that's because their functions are different. So when you think about cartilage, here are three types, hyaline, elastic, and fibro. Which one do you think is tougher and would have a form to match its function, which would be a tougher place in the body for support. If you guess the fibrocartilage, you would be right. Notice it has a lot of collagen fibers and collagen fibers are very, very strong and resistant to um, pull. This one is the lightest or softest cartilage. Remember it's present in the joints. It tends to have a thin matrix Okay, the main cell is a chondrocyte. Notice each kind of cartilage, the main cell is a chondrocyte. Also in elastic cartilage, this is present in your ear, the main cell is a chondrocyte. And it's for, it's, it shows it in a, something called a lacuna. The lacuna is just a little opening, the little hole where the chondrocyte lives, and the matrix around it is where it, it gets its nutrients, it exchanges, um, osmotically with the fluids around it to get its nutrients. Notice elastic cartilage has a lot more elastic fibers. And then the firmest type of cartilage, fibrocartilage, can be found in places like between your spine where you need support. You also need a little movement, but you need support. And it limits the movement because it is very, very strong. Notice these little things that look like eyes, those are the chondrocytes. Again, in an opening called the lacuna and many, many collagen fibers stacked close. The last one I wanted to mention is bone and bone is still in that category of supporting or supportive connected tissue. Anytime you see the prefix osteo or os, those always refer to bone. So bone, believe it or not, has tons of collagen fibers surrounded by a matrix of calcium and phosphorus salt, okay? It's very strong, but it also gives a little bit when necessary. We call each of these little circles here, when you look at the picture, an osteon. These are osteons, and notice you have blood vessels in the middle of the osteon in a canal, We'll be talking a lot more about bone in um, chapter six as we begin the skeletal system. And that, my friends, is the end of this video.